Yeah, so as usual, ah uh, hari ini kita boleh saling berinteraksi dan berkenalan dalam Zoom chat ini. We can always ah uh, berinteract with each other using this Zoom chat. So, fellow teachers, put down your name, put down your name and which school are you from? Put down your name and which school are you from in the Zoom chat as usual. Yes, and then you can say good morning, say hi to all the teachers over here. Yeah, just like an online gathering of the educators over here. We have uh, almost 100 educators gathering together in this Zoom session. So teachers can put out your name and which school are you from and say hi to all the teachers over here. Bolehlah salim kenalan, saling ah uh, saling berkenalan dan juga cakap hi, cakap good morning dengan cikgu-cikgu lain dengan type in sekolah anda dan nama anda. Yes, good morning cikgu Aslina Amir. Ya, yeah, dari SMK Permatang Rawa. Good morning, Cikgu Liao. Yes, Loshana. Hi, Cikgu Raza dari SMK Sri Gading. Good morning, Cikgu Ramzia, SK Kulim Kedah. Cikgu Jennifer, SMK Tun Abang Haji Openg Kuching. Cikgu Rafida, good morning. Cikgu Suriati, yes. Ah, semua semua sudah pernah nampak kami ya. Sudah pernah nampak kami, sudah pun familiar dengan kami. Sebelum ni kita... Ah, Join in creative learning kan, creative learning. So ada pelbagai negeri di sini, macamlah satu sesi gathering uh, educators from all around Malaysia. So ada Selangor, ada Penang, ada Kajang, ah Selangor lah, ada uh, mana lagi, ada Johor, wow, ada Klang, ada Perak, wah memang semua boleh berkumpul dalam sesi Zoom ini. We can all gather in this Zoom session without without any restriction of the state, of the distance, and of how many of us. Right, S. Uh, hi, Cikgu Rosmini, SJKT Bukit Mertajam. All right, we will start in um, very, very soon, in about one, two minutes. So teachers, if you know any teachers who are supposed to join in our session today, uh, ask them to join in now, join in now. We will be starting very soon. And today, we'll have a very, very powerful very, very powerful speaker to engage with us today and bring us bring with us a very very useful topics for teachers today yes good morning Cikgu Nana Cikgu Adlina from Sam Kulu uh, Langat SAM Kulu Langat good morning Cikgu Rutifa SMK Ahmad Bostaman Perak Cikgu Rosita SK Tan Sri Dr. Sulaiman welcome 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 semua all right for those who just join in a very good welcome to Education Expert Sharing Session brought to you by SCORE A Fabcaster Malaysia. Selamat datang sekali lagi saya ucapkan kepada cikgu semua ke sesi perkongsian pakar pendidik yang dianjurkan oleh SCORE A Fabcaster Malaysia. So pertama sekali saya nak pastikan cikgu semua I want to make sure all teachers have joined in our Telegram group. So once again I put down the Telegram group link into the Zoom chat. If you have joined in the Telegram group link uh, the Telegram group of SCORE A Pubcaster Expert Sharing Session. Could you please type in one, type in one, SCORE A Pubcaster Expert Sharing Session, which is this link. Type in one if you have joined in. Uh, we have we have a recording link later, Cikgu Liao, so we will share with you in the group as well. Yes, good morning, Cikgu Nora Slina Wati from SK Putrajaya, Presence 11. Ah, <laughs> Cikgu Liao. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, we are about to start. Hopefully, teachers are ready, are ready with your energy, with your everything else that we need. So, harap-harap cikgu sudah pun bersiap sedia dengan tenaga minda dan juga alat-alat yang diperlukan untuk pagi ini. Saya so, amat bersyukur semua boleh join in. Ah, Pada Sabtu ini, ah, cikgu-cikgu punya family day, cikgu-cikgu punya holiday, cikgu semua ah, bertungkus lumus dan berusaha untuk join in sesi hari ini untuk belajar sesuatu yang baru ataupun ilmu-ilmu yang penting tentang pembelajaran dan pengajaran kreatif dengan expert kita, expert undangan kami. Okey, masa sudah 9.35. So tanpa menekan masa, marilah kita mulakan sesi kita 
pada pagi ini. So, cikgu-cikgu semua, adakah anda sudah bersedia? Adakah anda sudah bersedia dengan alat-alat yang diperlukan? Uh, marilah kita buat satu test dengan uh, secepatnya. Cikgu-cikgu semua, sila buka video. Buka video. Lepas tu, kalau cikgu sudah sediakan alat tulis, alat tulis yang ada, boleh tunjukkan pada video. Uh, alat tulis anda yang sediakan. Uh, adakah uh, ia merupakan kit-kit Faber-Castell yang sebelum ni? Ya, yeah, cikgu Jennifer. Awesome. Ah, okey, bagus, bagus, bagus. Wow, ada juga yang bar- masih lagi uh, bawa fabcast dia punya toolkit. Awesome, awesome. So harap-harap cikgu semua sudah ready. Kalau sudah ready, if you are ready, can type in the chat ready, R E A D Y ready, and J and I will be introducing our expert for today and what today's topic is all about. All right, yes. All the teachers are ready. All the teachers are ready. And without further ado, I would like to introduce our first expert for today's session. All right. Welcome. Welcome all teachers to today's expert sharing session brought to you by Fab Castell, Score A Fab Castell. We have today our speaker, Mr. Zaid Ali al Sagov bring to you the topic of visualizing learning to simplify, engage, and inspire. Mr. Zayed is a leading innovation specialist with over 20 years of experience in tertiary and corporate education. He is the top 10 most influential people in corporate education learning sector for the Asia-Pacific region in 2013 and 2014. He's a board member of Unique School in Istanbul, Turkey in 2018. He's AKE PT ACAP trainer, member of the National E-Learning and MOOC committees in Malaysia, and he's a certified HRDF trainer. So here is some of the sneak peek and also artwork and the visual work done by Mr. Zaid with various topics. For example, we have self-hypnosis to deep sleep. We have your visual alphabet to greatness. All this very perfectly and beautifully illustrated using his work, his visual and his illustration. Also like note taking, also 16 core values, top 10 skills, all this. He'll be sharing with teachers how do actually all teachers can actually have your own style and then creating your visuals as such. And he also created this see what dot art Instagram and later on teachers can follow as well. So teachers, are you ready? Are you ready to invite our Mr. Zaid al to join us today to bring to you this meaningful topic? If you are ready, if you are ready, can you type in, in the chat, score A, S-C-O-R-E-A, score A, and we will be inviting Mr. Zaid in no time. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you all teachers. And without further ado, let us welcome Mr. Zaid Ali al Sogov to enter the Zoom and greet the teachers and start this session right now. Welcome, Mr. Zaid. Uh, okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning, everyone. Uh, can I say hi to everyone here? <laughs> yeah, so fellow yeah. teachers, if uh, you want to say hi to Mr. Zaid over here, type in the chat, type in the <laughs> chat, flip the chat with all the hi. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, mashallah. Okay, I, I I'll just uh, share my screen. Huh? Hey. Who can share? Host only. Can I? Can you give me sharing advance? I don't think. Can I share? Yes. All okay. Now I can share. share. Okay. Now I can share. Okay. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, we will uh, we will uh, we will use the chat uh, to chat because it's easier to have a conversation. And I notice you guys are very good on the chat, so that's very good. Uh, let's just close this first. Okay. Uh, so basically, I have this here. Everybody can see the my my full screen PowerPoint. Okay, great. Okay, so the topic today is about visualizing learning to simplify and engage and inspire uh, the learning process and the person, of course, the students and even the teachers. Uh, let me just share with you a little thing about drawing and illustration. Uh, I stopped drawing at the age of twelve, as usually kids they got into football and so on. But interestingly. I rediscovered drawing 
at the age of 42. I'm 49 now, but I rediscovered drawing at the age of 42 as I was exploring how the brain learns and what makes it most of, more effective and so on. So that's what, so if you're, if, you're, if, you're not, if you're not used to drawing and you feel that you're too old or maybe you're not thinking it right or you can't draw, uh, this, it's, I don't think it's any time too late, especially if you're a teacher, it's good to know how to draw at least what you are teaching. Okay, so first of all, I would like to say thank you to the host, uh, uh, Jay, Jai and uh, Wen, Wen, Wen Ping. <laughs> okay, sorry for that. So say that, and, and of course, it's a score A. Okay, so I want to ask you now, I think, because I'm mostly in higher education and corporate, uh, very often uh, professors and lectures, many of them cannot uh, illustrate at all, especially using the whiteboard and so on. So I want to ask you now, uh, how many of you uh, feel this, as this image shows, I can't draw? Or you say, I can draw. I can or I can't? So yes, if I can. Or no, if I can't, I can. Because yeah, I notice teachers usually use a lot of whiteboards. So it's, it's not as much a, uh, that's good. So that I know where you are. Very good. Uh, uh, very great. I can draw. Because I think that's very important. It's a very easy way to connect. Not So it, it's a very easy way to connect with students. Okay. Okay. So let's. Do this. Uh, these are three rules I usually do when I when I do workshops. Uh, so the first one is, can you fill in the blank? Everyone can. Everyone can draw. <laughs> At least what you teach uh, to some extent. <laughs> okay. The uh, next one. Progress comes with. With practice. Yes, <laughs> comes with mistakes, effort. Yes, great. Uh, okay, and the last one is, <laughs> this is, uh, I think this is the most fun thing. I mean, the most important thing is to have fun because a lot of people, they, they know all this, but they don't have fun with it. So it kind of turns them off or, or runs away from it. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're drawing. Okay. So let's just do an exercise now. Everybody has have pens, right? Or you have your... Fabel Castell, yes. So I want you to do, just for fun, and you can share in Telegram once you're done. I give you one minute only. I want you to draw a square in the middle of a page. Just draw a square. And you just use your imagination uh, on the square to draw anything you want, inside, outside, whatever. Just let your imagination loose. Is that okay? I, we, take, we can take one minute for that. Huh? Let's do that one minute. See what you can come up in one minute. And then afterwards, you can share it in the Telegram. Okay. Yep. So as usual, uh, Mr. Zaid, first activity is uh to draw something out of this uh, yeah, square. Out of the box. Yes. Anything, anything from the box. And after that, you snap a picture and send to the Telegram group of Score A Expert Sharing Session. Right. I'll share the Telegram group link once again in the Zoom chat. So have fun. It could be abstract. It could be anything. Just let your imagination flow. Let's see uh, the flow of creativity. <laughs> mm. Sometimes it's nice to draw and you have no idea what you're drawing. Just let it loose. I'm also drawing now for fun. I have no idea what I'm drawing. <laughs> I think this is very important for kids also sometimes just to, to let loose, you know, just let them let the mind flow. Because a lot of great ideas come from letting the mind flow and, uh, and using the pen. I'll give you one more minute because I'm still drawing. So, so I suppose many of you.
Okay, I think the host, maybe you can, uh, if somebody has already started sharing their stuff, can uh, can open up. Uh, I, the expert, I mean, the host is better than me then, when you want to share images from the Telegram. No worries. So, uh, fellow teachers, okay, if you have done, <laughs> ah, you see, Anjit Zaid has already <laughs> uh, done. Wow. Uh, but this is, see, I, I have no idea what I'm going to draw. It just ends up something. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. It Looks like an animal. <laughs> I, I don't know what it yeah. is. It's an uh, animal, animal cup. But the thing is, uh, this is uh, sometimes easy to, 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 to loosen up uh, the students and so on. And also the teachers' uh, warm-up session uh, since we're going to do a bit drawing and so on. Okay. So maybe you can share some of the examples. I see somebody shared there already. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the teachers are probably having uh, you know their <laughs> own time and uh, creativity <laughs> session to really expand out the, 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 the drawing. So teachers, fellow teachers, uh, once you have done, once you have done with the square, <laughs> okay, with the square, yeah. expand the square activity, you can already put in a telegram. So now take a picture, time is up, take a picture and then send to telegram, send to telegram. Yeah. Um, not the creative learning group, yeah? it's the score A Fabcastel expert sharing session, <laughs> right? Score A Fabcastel expert sharing session. The, the link that I just shared in the, in the, in the uh, Zoom chat, right? The telegram that I just shared in the Zoom chat. Uh, for example, teacher Lee Kwan Ho and teacher Asina can share in the score A Faber Castell expert sharing sh uh, group instead, right? Then we can show uh, to Zaid on what have teachers in mind, what actually in teachers' mind when you see this square. I think this is something which. Uh with grown-ups uh, is different from children. Children will need, to, oh, wow, very interesting. See how beautiful it is from a square. you got a heart, son. Very nice. Love your day. <laughs> and you have a quote, also very nice. You got very nice. Yes, I think it's very important. Uh, children have this skill. When they do something, they want to show everyone. Uh, when we grow older, we kind of, uh, we do something we don't want to show anyone. It's like the opposite. Uh, and that takes away our fear that people will judge us and so on. I think sometimes it's good to let loose and, and just share what you've done. And live with it because it's, it's something that you can always improve so it's not a problem so don't take it uh, i think this is something as a grown-up i learned uh, myself had to re relearn uh, that that sometimes when you do things just share it and and take the positive and negative and see it as something that you can always improve and enjoy the, the process instead of just output <laughs> okay okay but, so uh fellow teachers now it's wow, can be shared oh, already that. can oh, be shared in telegram already so nice. feel free to share it right now <laughs> very nice yeah, we only have one hour, so we can't have that much time. I wish you could. Uh, usually, I, it should be two or three hours, so we will see. Very nice. Wow, I love this. <laughs> oh, score A. Okay. Uh, now, beautiful characters. I can see they draw very nice. Okay. Wow, this is a square mandala. Mandela. <laughs> very nice. Like a spiral over there. Oh, oh, yes. Let's sit for the exam, online exam. Score <laughs> <laughs> Oh, draw a nice house with a, with a gate. Very, very creative. So this is one of the beauties, which is, I think the education time, when you give them a, a base, like a circle or a triangle and square, it provides that freedom. See, see how different your artwork is. If I were to have more instructions, the creativity usually would, would go down, you know? And this is one of the things uh, I, 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 it's very important in creativity, which sometimes schools hinder, is that we give them too much instruction what to do, the creativity gets... Uh, constraint and you can see <laughs> the oh yes somebody's thirsty here good morning looking for what's that starbucks or <laughs> <laughs> oh very nice you should keep these drawings remember because remember everyone started from the same as thinking out of the box or, or thinking inside the box in the square oh a house on a tree <laughs> oh very nice okay oh this is not one like a window you're looking into the to the new world yes oh this one's a cute little is that a uh, some some kind of Christmas uh, uh, Christmas mode or is it a robot? Maybe it's a robot. <laughs> wow, with color. Okay, it's good for promoting the, the the pencils here. Yeah, very good. Wow, this is very nice. Okay, uh, we can share later. I think you can see in the group. Uh, I'll go. <laughs> I wish we had more time because because we have about 116 here. So uh, we okay. Let's go back here. Okay. So, so let me just share quickly what uh, one of the things I'm doing now is uh, it's actually I'm semi to be honest. Although I'm 49, uh, uh, I've I've been so much in education technology. So I've I've come to a stage that 
uh, I want to do something I'm really, really passionate about, and that's the see what project. Maybe the host can share the link in the in the chat group. Let's see yep, right yeah. away. Yeah. So basically, uh, one of the things that I discovered studying how the brain learns. One of the things is if we uh, being discovering things, we learn much deeper than being forced upon us. Uh, and and one of the things I I said myself also. So what I did is. Uh, I like to, to draw. I like to learn. So I try to combine that in my project, which is called the See What Project. It's actually uh, it's rediscovering God's creation and man's creativity. And every day I will draw one or two things that inspire me or not necessarily inspire me, but uh, it's, it's something that touched me in, in a both negative and a positive way. And, and then I will share it. Now I do it on Instagram, but we're trying to create a game also. Uh, so I won't tell them what it is and then let people guess what it is. So I can just say, I shared some of the drawings that I've done and I've chosen black and white specifically. I've chose the same template. I just draw with a, a digital pen, but a very, just one type. The idea here is, is, is to rediscover things and, and, and be curious about them. And it's a lot of things that we, we've forgotten that we have. So let, you can see my pointer here. So I'm going to point at something here and try to guess what it is. Yeah, I, I pointed at this uh, black, ah, all the black, but there's some kind of box. What is that? Let's see if you can... At the moment, it's on Instagram, so people can still guess, but I will reply to them in the personal message. But we're, we're building a game, so it'll automate the whole thing. Uh, Ghostbusters, okay, Jai, Jai, uh, you didn't allow your, your participants to answer. No? <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, let's try another one. Uh, this one. What about this one? This guy waving his hands up. Anything? Does it bring back a memory? Anyone? Squid Game, okay, dance, okay. So if you're my age, it might be a different age because I'm 49. Eh? So I grew up on a, on a famous movie. I give a hint. It's a movie, a famous movie that was uh, a ninja, ninja. It's a famous movie. Uh, it is uh, boxing. Ah, Rocky, giant <laughs> champion. Okay. okay, this one everybody should know. Okay, <laughs> this one everybody should know, right? This one should be quite easy. Uh, easy. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, correct. E -T. Okay, let's try another one. I'll try one more. Uh, this one? What about this one down here? So I like to draw. I don't draw the whole things. I draw, okay, which? Think about a movie. Ah, there, Ima. <laughs> so I like to draw in black and white because that allows the imagination to, to color it. Because if, if you draw in color, uh, it kind of kills the bit of the funnel. So, so I have a lot of things here. Let's try this one. Uh, uh, this one is a bit naughty, but this one here, this one here, what is this? <laughs> Maleficient, okay, Zion, okay, can you Can anybody guess what this is? Uh, this is one of the poop, okay, it's a poop, but what kind of animals uh, poops a square poop? There's only one, as far as I know, square, like chunks, like in beer. It's actually, okay, maybe it's a beer, but it's a wombat, wombat, it's called a wombat. Okay, let's do one more, last one, last one, last one. This one, okay, this one you should know, this one, something with education. Uh, this one is a, is a movie. It's, it's, it's based on a movie. But I took away the head. Huh? Can someone guess who that is? Suit. Okay, it's a suit. Okay, great. That's okay. It's good. So see, the thing is, people see many things. But once you associate with your past memory, it becomes, okay. Nur Azliwati said, naughty professor. Yes. I even drew his hands white, although it's by... Uh, Eddie Murphy, <laughs> people still guess it correct. Candyman, okay, okay. The last one, this one, everybody should know. All kids know. So, this game, actually, what I created is going to be a game. It's also kids and parents can play together. Uh, PS1, okay, very specific, Giovanni. <laughs> so, it's actually, yeah, the first PS, PS1, very good, very good. So, I, I try to draw things from different decades, uh, and also, so, so actually, kids and parents can play together. And sometimes the kid get, guess it correctly, sometimes the parents guess correctly. But at the moment, it's just on Instagram. So you can follow every day. I'll post one or two uh, on Instagram, but we're building it into a game also. But I like it when I post on Instagram, I get a lot of feedback because sometimes my drawings might be to totally out. So it, it doesn't make sense. So I have to redraw them or take them out of the thing. Okay, so that's my project, what I'm doing now. And I'm doing it full time. And that's my, if it's successful, I, I don't mind doing it for the rest of my life actually because I love learning new things. I love sharing it. But I don't like, I like to share it to spark people's imagination, curiosity, thinking and discovery instead of just spoon feeding what it is. Okay, uh, let's go. Okay, so today, already you've gone 20 minutes. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is, is learning in terms of visual learning, teaching, 
simplifying uh, the learning uh, through our teaching and engaging. How do we engage? I just give you some examples and how to inspire, uh, which is also engage it's all sparked together but i want to ask you something you see this drawing here this is a drawing i did in 2018 now uh, i know if you've learned about memory palaces and 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 um, and uh, mind mapping and so on but guess what is this drawing actually this is a kind of a memory palace but it's a visual uh, it's not so uh, specific but it, it's if you remember this visual you you can actually give a talk about something what is it this drawing what does it represent okay the world okay Let's see. So this is the beauty of whether it's student or teacher doing themselves to help them to keep in long-term memories, of course, visualization. Because our mind usually remember things in, 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 in pictures. Technology, okay. Now, look at this middle guy. What is he? Who does he look like? This middle guy here. Could look like. Big Bob Ross. <laughs> Anyone? Artist. <laughs> Professor. Okay. Think about one of the most creative people in the history of mankind. I know. I mean, there's a lot of creative people. But we know when you say creativity, who comes to your mind? Jesus. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who else? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, Giovanni. Uh? Uh, yes. Leonardo da Vinci. This is my own way of fun drawing. But what is interesting in this drawing is I try to draw him. Uh, draw many of his ideas, his, his innovative ideas into one picture. So if I were to remember this picture, I would remember many of his ideas. Like he had the idea of a tank, he had of this uh, gun that could shoot 32, uh, uh, what do you call it, bombs in one shot, parachute, uh, plane. He used to love drawing horses, Mona Lisa. He talked about time. He had mobile bridges. He had smart cities. So all this combined into drawing. And this is one of the beauties uh, is, is when you visualize, you can visualize many things into a simple drawing and then you can remember that drawing uh, and that becomes part of your long-term memory in, in a creative way okay so learning so one of the things that i discovered because i was studying a lot on how the brain learns and so on is that even now when you're here in this session if you are just to listen i just talk 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 you will see the brain not so active uh, but what is very interesting is if you take notes which one is more effective writing notes or typing notes what do you think just say writing or typing. When you want to take notes, you prefer writing or typing. And this is even this generation or so, even when they use digital, uh, some Lina likes typing, okay? Uh, most people like, okay, drawing, okay, writing or drawing, okay, of course, drawing is, uh, I'll get to that. Uh, it's very interesting because they've done research on this. And I'm going to share with you something very interesting when I was doing research on this, uh, is that why, why is writing seem to be more effective than typing when you want to take notes and remember them quickly as you as you type or as you write anyone want to share quickly in the chat why is any why is that effort to write okay use uh, benong we will more understanding what we write okay at the fingertips, okay, Jennifer. But in typing, you use five fingers, right? But I will share with you something which is very important to remember, because uh, I worked in a medical university for seven years, use our brain neutral psychomotor, very good, is that the two fingers in our hands that are essential, that are so connected to our brain. And if when they are really activated, they really light up our brain. And which two fingers are that? And this is what usually when you term. And that is our thumb and index finger. So when we write, actually, we will press the pen and that. And this, these two fingers, if you if you study the brain, uh, they are so interconnected to our brain, and it's so important to activate them. So it's kind of a magic. And you know, in the olden days when they when they went to war, when they wanted to destroy the artist, they will cut off the index finger and the thumb, which is horrible. But that's something that they they would do to make sure that the artist didn't create things or even uh, or people that made weapons and so on. Okay, so it's very important. But what I'm going to say is writing is good. But when you're drawing, it kind of even activates more your whole brain. Writing and drawing together, connecting it, activates your whole brain. Okay, so this is another thing. When I was teaching learning skills, one of the things I used to start teaching about 10 years ago, learning skills and so on, uh, I kept across this drawing effect. It's very effective. To, if you want to remember something, it's very good to draw. Drawing, drawing, drawing. Draw what you learn. Draw what you learn. And I said, ah, forget it. So I was teach, teaching learning skills. But then I said, I said, okay, let's learn how to draw. That was at the age of 42. 
and 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 it's a very powerful tool to learn, as as you already know. And it's they say in some research show that it's better than just writing the words, mental imagery, and picture superiority. But as a teacher, uh, the ability to illustrate uh, is is even more powerful because you can sometimes simplify teaching. Sometimes you don't have the visuals to do it, and you can just pick up a marker pen and with a few illustrations you can simplify and inspire the students to to learn. OK, so let's guess here. So visualization can be very important in many areas. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I had some interesting illustrations. Which field is number one? Just can you try to guess? Anyone? Biology, OK, that's OK. Uh, it's good enough. Uh, so it's science, but biology science, OK. Next one, what's number two? <laughs> Testing my visuals. <laughs> number two is what? Robotics, yes. So, okay, so good enough. Technology, yes, the Vini, Vini. Robot technology, okay, because it's a robot there, fine. Number three, what's number three? Engineering, yes, very good. <laughs> My drawing's not so bad. Huh? Number four, what's number four? Stefani Lee, okay, great. Geology, okay. Number four is what? Maths, okay. Everyone knows pi, right? Okay, and number five? <laughs> Art, yes, correct. Ima, Noraz Lima, Zwati, okay. Number six, what was number six? Fight, war, <laughs> what, what is it? History, yes, I, okay, history. Good, good, good. Number six is history. Okay, uh, number seven, number seven? <laughs> Film, study, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And that was drama, yeah, actually drama, theater is okay. I put language, but it's all together connected, yes. I think drama would be the best there. Uh. Number eight, let's see, number eight. Medical, Ima is again very, very good, Ima. Oh, everybody, that one's good, easy. Okay, number nine. <laughs> Neurology, okay. <laughs> uh, but you see there's a business education. Yes, very good, very good, very good. So it's business, yeah, see. So in other words, visualization is, is important. In me I just shared some of the areas. But actually, in most areas, you need to do some form of visualization where you're teaching or learning or so on. So what I did is a few years back before COVID and so on, I used to go to different schools and encourage students and teachers to draw more. Don't give up on it too early. So you can see uh, some pictures when I bring to go to schools and, and, and even universities. And you can see some of the drawings that did. Uh, this drawing was very important. Were, I asked them, what would the future teacher look like? So <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm not sure, but this was quite interesting. Though. So this is University of Malaya. I got professors to draw. So they draw the most amazing things. And I like group drawing, which is a lot of fun. This is from Taylor's. This is from uh, in, uh, in Turkey. Uh, and this is yeah from Turkey students. They are very lively. And this is from USM. So these are just some pictures. I teach them how to do digital drawing for their classes, for their develop, develop their own content. Sometimes not just searching Google image search and so on. And here it was. So these are just some pictures. So in other words, this first uh, on my opening slide is visual note taking or doing visualization uh, is important for learning, of course but also important for teaching. Why should you do it? It's also for teaching and also for problem solving, creative innovation. So all those combined. So when you have that skill to take visuals, uh, you can use it as a learning tool, you can use it as a teaching tool, and you can use it as a very powerful tool to solve problems. And I think when you use visuals, when you do problem solving, it kind of lightens up the, the, the room instead of just having text and, and bullets and, and even just mind maps without visuals. Visuals help to, to spice up the learning and the fun and the creativity. And you can see this drawing here, uh, which I tried to illustrate, is uh, one of the things with, uh, when you use visual notes and text, you have dual coding. The brain activates, uh, this connects the word with the visual. And you must understand, when we remember something, we don't remember things in words. Even when you remember words, you remember the visual of the letters of the words. So it's very important to have a strong visual to connect with what we want to remember. Uh, and also visuals help us sometimes focus better. And we talked about picture superiority effect and also activates the whole brain when we visualize. Uh, so you can visualize in your mind, which is great. But if you can also illustrate simple drawings, uh, it will help you to activate more of your brain. And the interesting part is, uh, as far as I've learned, I may, I may be wrong there, but as far as I know, is that it's not how important, how beautiful your drawing is for you to remember. Because end of the day, you, even if your drawing is bad, you can make it beautiful in your imagination <laughs> or make it interesting innovation. So don't worry about, oh, my output is not nice. My memory is not. It doesn't work that way. Some people have beautiful visuals. They can't remember a thing what they have drawn. So, I mean, yeah, that happens to me also. So, so don't worry about that part, okay? Uh, but of course, when you're teaching, you want your, your, your content uh, to be visually stimulating. Okay. So the question is, 
when you want to visualize, what do you visualize? You can't, you don't, as a teacher, you have very busy, you have extreme schedules. What do you visualize? Okay. So this is something to keep in moment. This is a, a, a term. It's called the star moment, which is something they'll always remember. So if it's something that you really want to visualize, uh, try to find, start with in your lecture, your, your, your talk or your, your class or your session or your chapter, what is the most important thing there uh, that they need to remember? If there's anything they need to remember from that, what you're teaching, that is a good starting point, what you want to visualize. Now, it doesn't always can be visualization because you don't know how to visualize or, but that is, if you want to, if you ask me when you want to start visualize, focus on the things that is so critical instead of just visualizing everything for the sake of it. Of course, you, you can use emotive stories, drama, shocking statistics, uh, this visual course, and repeatful sound bites. But today we're talking about visuals. Huh? So if you ask me, what should I visualize? Focus on what is important first, not everything. Okay. Uh, okay. So what are the mediums? Uh, today with technology, if you have a camera, you can, if you want to record it, you can, or you can, you can use paper, paper and uh, just pens. Uh, I think most of you use the whiteboard or you can use what I'm using now to do my drawings is I have a iPad Pro and I have a Apple Pencil. Okay. So it's up to you which medium you want. But that's the beauty that uh, I recommend if you can master all three, uh, or not master, but become good at all three, that will help you so much as a teacher when you're tutoring or teaching and so on. So here's an example uh, of my vision note. This is more for, for like a student or you're learning something, you're attending a lecture. So I, I, I didn't do, I did it live, but of course I touched it up afterwards. This was a lecture by Prof Moshtak. Uh, he talked about employability in the 21st century. He talked for one hour. And then I, I captured what were the key essence, and then I tried to visualize uh, the key essence. So in his whole lecture, this was what was critical that I summarized. And, and I think that's very important for students when they're learning something, is we want them to remember everything, but there's always something more important that they should not forget. And that's what they should capture. So that's why I tried to capture my, when I did my own uh, uh, learning note on this lecture. So the three critical things in this lecture was academic excellence, emotional intelligence, and happiness, and then some of the subs. Uh, so, so the good thing is when you create visual notes, you can just have this in front of you and you can recall so much of it by just looking at this image instead of looking at pages of pages of notes. Okay, but when you, in terms of teaching, uh, this is a STEM conference. This is an example of STEAM. So I just did fun for, uh, uh, instead of just STEM, I put STEAM because art in the middle. So I just did a drawing of that. So this is more of like a teaching note. Okay. So what is my visualization process? I always recommend when you want to visualize, especially if you're doing for your teaching materials or visualizations, even students also, whoever teaches them, always start with low tech, you know, because that's when you can scribble, have fun, you can do it anywhere. So I also like when I want to visualize things, I always start low tech, just a pen or a pencil, uh, just some paper and scribble first. Have fun scribbling, scribbling until you, you find that visual that's or the, the visuals that suit what you want to do. And then you use more high tech and to make it more beautified to show whether it's a student or teacher and so on. So these are the, some of the things to keep in mind. When you want to visualize something, uh, try to capture the keywords that you want to visualize first. What are the keywords in that aspect you want to learn? Like I showed you just now, this example here, right? The, these are the four words. So these are the things I want to visualize, right? So capture the keywords. When you want to visualize something, don't need to visualize first. Capture the keywords that you want to visualize. Number two is say that I have four words that I want to visualize in a page. You think about layout before you start, uh, before you want to place the, the, the text into the, into the visuals. Then uh, you can have a head if you, if you don't have a head, it's fine. It doesn't have to look like this. It can look like a mind map format, any format. But today, in this example, I decided to have a very straightforward uh, format in this example. And then you put in the keywords and then you put the visuals surrounding the keywords. Or you can do, you could do the opposite, but I recommend usually doing the keywords and placing them where you want on the page and then put the visuals, okay? Because the text becomes a critical part connecting with the visuals. And then usually if you have connectors, you connect, the, connect them together later. So this is one process that I usually, I've tried many processes. But of course, as I said, like what I would do, if you ask me uh, as a student or a teacher, if I'm, capturing some learning process, I will always scribble first. Have fun scribbling, because if you want to have great beautiful notes at the same time, you want to create uh, uh, relevant, meaningful notes, you're wasting time beautifying it. So focus on capturing the keywords. So during the lecture, the most important, capture the keywords and how they're connected. And then later you can 
working about beautiful, you can redraw it or rewrite it later. So I think that's very critical. Any questions until now? Because I've covered quite a lot now without interacting with you. Abdul Razak says no. Okay. Okay. But we can have any Q&A because we're going to have a Q&A in about 20 minutes. Okay. So when you talk about visualization, I think this is very critical. When you want to visualize, you don't visualize just for the sake of visualization. The first thing that if you ask me, we do what visualize, you, it's simplifying. If you're making things more complex with your visuals, your visual for, for learning purposes or teaching purposes, it has is it defeated the purpose. So in other words, when you want to use visuals, you want to also you want to simplify the complexity, not complexify the simple simple things. Okay. So simplify. That's the first. If you're not simplifying, maybe you should think twice about using images. Huh? <laughs> it gets more messy. The second thing is you want to make image to engage them. It's like, wow, I want to learn this. This is so interesting. So that's where the power and the image comes in instead of just having text. Oh, I, this engages the mind. Okay. And then number three, not only engage, inspires them. Because as a teacher, there's nothing more inspiring for a teacher when a student gets those aha moments and they say, oh, I remember because of you, I learned this. Because of you, you may. So if you can reach that level through your teaching and also through your visualization that you can inspire them. And because there's some, it's amazing. You can see some, even as, it's, as a, te a learner yourself, you remember some teachers really inspired you. And not necessarily visuals, but there's something about it. So you want to, another day, you want to inspire your students in a way or, that makes you more motivated to be a teacher. So talk about simplifying. This is a simple drawing I had. Uh, as I say, I, I like to draw and ask what it is. What is this? <laughs> what does this drawing represent? <laughs> Anyone, what does this drawing represent? Yeah, please ask questions in the Padlet. Okay. What? Wow, Sun, Galaxy. Okay, Trumpet. Okay, interesting, right? So now I'm going to zoom in. See, with a drawing, you can create that curiosity. People are participating and the thinking. Now you think so when your brain is activated, that's when the, the deep learning, I mean, not the deep learning, but that when your brain is, is really remembering stuff. What is this? This is actually a theory summarized in one drawing. Which theory? Anyone? A theory that summarizes this drawing. Okay, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Uh, I will share it now. It's the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> the Big Bang Theory, the idea that everything started, okay, we, of course, as a Muslim, I believe that God created this Big Bang, but it's from this spark of atom, the whole universe is, uh, became alive. So, Allah, I mean, God created this spark of, so spark the whole universe. So, it started with this little, you can see there, this little bang here, and then it was dark matter, and then the formation of stars and galaxies and so on. So, <laughs> this is a little trick. So, now, the thing is, with visuals, you can have so much in one visual. So, when you remember this, by just looking at this visual, all these pegs memories come back. So that's one of the power of, of, of when you learn how to visualize and you have certain visuals, simple visuals that can spark so much information inside them, which is magic. Now, in terms of visualization learning, this is, uh, this is a professor, of course, he teaches medical. So he has used teaching medical with visuals by just using the whiteboard, which is beautiful. Uh, the link, I, I, will, uh, I will share the link in the, let me just share the link in the group. Huh? You can access it. He's, he charges for lecture, but you can see many of them for free. So he, he uses uh, just uh, the whiteboard to do everything, which is quite amazing. But his drawings are so interesting, but he can teach the most complex stuff by just using the whiteboard with a marker pen and so on. Now, what is important? Why sometimes uh, people say PowerPoint is not effective, but uh, when teachers illustrate, it's much more effective if they illustrate themselves. Why is that often? Or why is that sometimes the case? What is the biggest reason, the most common reason why people feel, feel sometimes PowerPoint is not so effective? It's not really the PowerPoint, it's the creator of the PowerPoint, but the, when they use PowerPoint, it happens quite often. What is it? Use a lot of words. Okay, I'm not saying that. The, the, yeah, it's correct. The information overload. And even with visual, or oh, too much images. It's too much information at one time, unless you learn how to animate. If you animate in PowerPoint, you can break up. But the beauty of it, when you learn how to illustrate uh, uh, your, your, what you're teaching, is that you allow yourself, to, you allow the students, it's like eating a pizza, right? 
if I were to give you the whole pizza and you stuff it in your mouth, what will happen? You will vomit, you'll puke it out. Yeah. And the same happens to the brain. If I give you a PowerPoint slide with everything in it at once, your, your brain gets shocked. Oh my God, this is too much information. I'm blocked. And then you have this blackout. You say, I can't, I can't grasp anything. But if I were to break it down, chunk it into small pieces, and then in, and that happens, that's guaranteed when you illustrate, if you're good at illustration, but you, you, it's bit by bit. So your brain allows you to understand even the most complex thing. Bit by bit, it comes together. And this is something that is beautiful when you, you learn how to illustrate as, as teachers. And I'm sure many of you do. Uh, and, and, and PowerPoint can be do it, but you need to break it down. And sometimes we, we, we get excited. We can put all this stuff in PowerPoint, a lot of stuff, but we need to break it down, which is very important. Okay. I have this activity, but we only have 15 minutes together. So do you know what I'll do is uh, I will cover uh, the next 15 minutes, what I have to cover. And then uh, during the Q&A, uh, I think so I, I want to share with you because we only have one hour. So I will sk skip this activity, but I wanted you to draw this. So if you can take a picture of this and you can draw this and share, I wanted to say whether much of you, you drew the same thing as me uh, of these nine items. Let me just take a picture of this and then you can draw it later. Uh, <laughs> okay. And here's some very interesting, yeah. Uh, B. B. Ong said, drawing is more friendly user and get information straightly directly. Okay, very interesting. Okay. Okay. So this is the thing with illustration is that uh, a lot, some people say they cannot draw, which is even if you think you cannot draw, even if you cannot draw, if you have a steady hand, I mean, if you have hands, some people don't have hands, it's, it's a bit more difficult, but if you have hands, your hands are steady. You, you're not expected to draw... Um, artwork you expect it just to draw what you teach so it's that's why i say it, it's like practicing doing it again and again so something if you want to draw the heart you draw it 10 15 times it becomes part of your internal memory and then uh, you can easily uh, with practice draw it again for the students when you're teaching step by step uh, so i call it simplifying anything and strategic drawing for it from memory linographic memory which anyone can do it up i think as long as you have a decently steady hand because some people don't have a steady hand all then you have to do it other ways uh, okay uh, and repetition is the mother of all learning. I don't know if this is a Russian proverb, but <laughs> okay. So engagement, okay. So let's have this guess here. Uh, I, if you heard about education, one, two, three, four, four, five, blah, blah. Okay. So if teach, if education 1.0 is teaching, education 2.0 is research, education 3 is knowledge, education 4.0 is innovation. What is education 5.0? If you had one word, if you had one word to call, what should education 5.0 be about? And I just for fun, I drew something here. Let's see if you have the same word, um, creative, okay? But innovation and creativity comes together. So number four, that comes under number four. What becomes more important than just creativity and innovation? More important. You can see what's happening now around the world, uh, which is quite uh, scary. Or zero doing exploration, okay? What else? What else? Come on. Think about something, visualization, creation. Uh, Something so important. You can see my picture here. Try to uh, solve problem, yes? If you look at my picture again, you can see this picture. What does it represent? So education for me becomes very much intelligence, okay? It becomes about... Uh, 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 okay, okay. Uh, okay, I'll give the term. I'm hoping so. Cooperation, okay, interesting. You're close, you're close. I give S. It starts with S. S-U. S-U-S. S U S T. Sustainable. Okay, stop my bubble. <laughs> okay, we be young. Okay, it's okay. Sustainability. Uh, okay, I'm not saying that's the word, but that's the word I think. It's because in this era, it's not enough just being creative, innovative, and creating money. You also have to think about the world. As you know, the world is burning, heating, and so on. So, education now is not just focused on being creative, but you're doing for the good of, of mankind. You're doing good of nature. You're doing good of uh, the world as a whole. So, that's why if you talk about, if you ask me, Education 5.0 is really about now is going beyond creative innovation. It's about sustainability. As you have to think about not just being innovative and just making money and living. You also have to think about the sea, the ocean, the air, and so on. And that becomes sustainability and all these uh, technologies that not only consume but also brings but gives back to nature, like uh, sun. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, heat, sun, and wind, and so on. Okay, very good. Okay, so this is another way of uh, teaching. Uh, this link is broken, so I cannot share with you, but Mrs. Dan Morgan, uh, Anna Morgan, uh, on the average, she will come to class early and for five to 20 minutes before, and she will draw something on the whiteboard. It can be a padlet or whatever. And then she will put some text, make it exciting. And then she'll ask a question to the students and students will come on the whiteboard either during class or before class and write what they think. For example, you can see down here, uh, how would you survive the zombie ap ap 
apocalypse, <laughs> and they will just write something, right? So I'm not saying that you have to be able to draw this to them, but this is just an example of using visuals to engage the students to participate in class in a creative way. Uh, uh, and and if, even if you cannot draw, you can print out something or you can even have your projector and then you have the whiteboard and you have a challenging question. They come up and share what they want on, on, on and physically comes out and share either in class or before class or after class. So this is just a great example of engagement, how you use visuals to engage. So how to make uh, visuals memorable? You can see this uh, image here. This is, uh, I went to attend this uh, beautiful talk. I mean, this is one of the best talks I've heard in many years. And this was the slide that he shared. And it was so powerful. So when I was listening to the talk, I said, can I visualize this? Uh, important. These are the six core values in, in, in Malaysian education. And, and then I drew this. I'm not saying this. This is also information overload. But I just wanted to repl re replicate the slide. But the idea of, of trying to visualize each uh, core value and, and to even to get students to visualize even better. You get students to uh, visualize each core value so it becomes part of them. Compassion, self-reliance, humility, respect, love, justice, and, and, and allow them to create, to, to each word becomes powerful and meaningful instead of just is a word there. Because uh, the, he, he said it, but the slide, if you, if you get the slides later, you don't, you don't bring it to life. And that's sometimes the beauty of uh, visualization. So when you visualize, this is very important, it's not just about uh, using a visual, uh, you must make a visual exciting. So this is by Tony Bozan. I drew this one, but it's Tony Bozan. Smash in scope. So here are some of the things that if you want to make a visual memorable, activate the whole brain, try to stimulate your senses, your smell. If your visual can stimulate your smell, that can activate uh, the visual to become more memorable. Uh, movement. If your visual is moving, instead, if you're drawing a car, a car that's moving in a fast speed, movement will make it the car more memorable. Associating uh, with what you have learned, Make it more with something you've learned before. Okay, I'm not going to talk about sexuality, but of course, people remember this stuff a lot. Humor, make it funny, make people laugh using your imagination. Numbering, which we all do when we talk about memory techniques. Symbolism, of course. Color coding, which you do in mind mapping. Ordering, sequencing, positive. And this is my favorite, exaggeration. So if you want to remember something, you exaggerate what you want to remember, and it becomes more memorable for your brain, and it becomes stick in terms of long-term memory. I know I'm a bit fast now, but I just want to share. Uh, we only have, I want to focus on the Q&A. Okay, and then Inspire, this is another example by Chun Bin Chung, if I remember correctly. What he will do is, he will draw out the human anatomy, uh, even the skeleton here, live in class, but he will also get the students to do it. But the, see, this is, what I like about this is, sometimes we say students to draw, but we don't do it ourselves. And somehow we need to also be a role model there. We can't just say, student draw, but I'm not going to draw. I don't. So sometimes you just have to be brave and, and, and show that students, I can also draw what you're learning. And then the students draw it later. So you create that uh, connection and show the, uh, that you are brave. Because if you're not brave, uh, it's sometimes difficult to expect the students to be brave. Okay. So this is something that you can do to start getting to visualization is to learn how to draw stick figures. Okay. Use stories to draw stick figures when you're teaching, uh, especially if you're teaching language and so on. Use stick figures. You can draw a stick figure and you can engage and you can ask the students, okay, I draw the stick figure. He's going to this house. What does he do next? And you can engage and create that uh, engaging learning environment. So I just want to ask you, how many of you know how to draw stick figures? Just say yes. Okay, good. Because this is very simple, very simple technique to do storytelling and engaging and, and, and getting the students involved. That's very good. So if you're not familiar with stick figures, okay, this is an example. So if I were to show you this image straight away, uh, uh, the students say, okay, but if I draw it out live in the class, somebody gets very exciting, right? Oh, what is he drawing? So they really start thinking while I'm drawing and they find out. And then when you finish your drawing or even during drawing, they guess what you're drawing. So I'm going to ask you, what am I drawing here? What does this represent? Okay, B1. See, love to see and imitate. Yes, true. Students love to see. Okay, what, what is this? Looking for help. Okay, look at these three people. What are they doing? Are they helping? <laughs> it's a terminology. So what is this? What, what is this? I'm teaching you a concept. No one's helping. He's drowning. And there's a shark coming after him. <laughs> there's a terminology for this. It happens when we are in a crowd. It happens when we are in a crowd. This happens. It's a terminology. It happens that when, when you see people, somebody suffering and you're together with a lot of people, some, sometimes nobody's doing anything. Why is that? Because everybody's expecting other people to do something. 
Okay, so what there's a term for this. It starts with B. B. Desperate, brave. Okay, so <laughs> it's called. I, I give you another ten seconds. Discovering. It's actually called. It's two words together, but it's, it's a terminal. It's a term. It's very important to to know if 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 because it happens quite often when when you're in big crowds, nobody does anything. Somebody needs help. It's called the bystander effect. Bystander effect. I'll I'll write in the uh, brainstorming bystander effect. I write there. Yes, beyond yes, bystander effect. Yeah. Oh, it's effect, sorry, not effect, sorry, effect with the A, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so this is something. So see, I, what I did now is I, I engaged you. I didn't tell you what it is. I engaged you. You start thinking. Your brain is activated, fully activated. And because I visualized it, I shared it, maybe that memory becomes stronger. And you will remember it even after this uh, session with you. Certain things that I've shared today that you will remember because the visuals and the process of how I shared with you made the memory stronger. Okay. Okay, so these are different kind of stick figures. You can start with normal stick figures. Uh, you can do star kind of stick figures. You can do card like boxes stick figures. This one is quite tough. The loop kind of stick figures. Greg stick figures. I call my it's my own. <laughs> no, I don't use this anymore. But these are the kind of stick I used to use last time. So you have to find your own stick figures. Uh, but the most important when you're teaching, if you're doing it live, you don't want to. The key of illustrating when you're doing live is. Uh, the illustrations not take a long time because you want to engage the audience. If you draw too long, sometimes you lose that connection with the audience. So simple. If you're using stick figures, simple. Okay. And you can come up with your own collections. So here, I just for fun, I create. So you can actually uh, cut them out and use them in your slides also if, if, if you create. Or you can use on the web. I mean, you can search for images and so on. Sometimes you want to have your own illustrations. Okay. So this is an example that I have. I did uh, 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 for each one. Oh, here's interesting. Rini said, I always use this, but people laugh at me. Uh, okay. And someone used it for stickman for choreographic dance, dances. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, they laugh at you or they're laughing with you. Maybe they're just laughing with you. They, they enjoy your, the way that you're teaching. I'm not sure because I didn't attend your class. Uh, but I think uh, maybe I'm not sure why they're laughing, but maybe they're actually laughing. They find the way you're doing it is funny. It's not that they're upset with you. I'm not sure. And maybe it's just a way of interacting with the audience. So here's just some examples of uh, simple that represent thinking, writing, drawing, coding, communicating, presenting, leading, collaborating, play, uh, plan, and building. So, so going back to the Rini, Susie, it could be that just they're enjoying the process, not just they're laughing at you, but they like uh, they're laughing with you with the the way you're presenting the uh, illustration. We don't have this activity. So this, I just want to share, I'm going to share with the last five minutes before we go into the Q&A. We started at uh, 10.35, so I'll go to 10. I mean, we started 9.35, so I'll go. So here I'll ask you to draw a person lost island. But what I usually do is very important if you're drawing visuals that you want to publish in your slides, always scribble. So I have this technique that I will just draw a box and I'll scribble what I want to draw. Because here was the task was to draw a person lost on an island. And I will scribble, scribble, scribble. And 30 seconds drawings, you know, just scribble, scribble to find what I want. And play around because usually your first idea is not your best idea you know <laughs> so that's why people sometimes they, they go into high tech when they have a bad idea it's always good to go to high tech when you have a better idea <laughs> you know so scribbling is very good scribble 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 and then when you find the right one then you go into high tech okay so this is just an example that i i would do that for this, this is just an example then i will digitize so what i want to share with you and this is the output of that scribble uh, okay uh, last time so what I want to share with you with digital drawing is, um, I don't teach it, but I'm just sharing with you that uh, the power of it, if you want to use it for your teaching and learning purposes, is one, uh, uh, you have a lot of technology. You can do it in using schools. I don't use Zoom and all that to draw because I, 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 I'm not a big fan of but that you can do it on the Jamboard or the open board and so on. But these are some of the technologies that you can use. You can see here. Uh, for, for taking notes, notability is very good. Uh, uh, for if you want a free, I used to use Sketchbook for two years, but now I use Procreate because I want to do a bit more artistic work. But Sketchbook is very good if you just want to create mind maps and so on. But it's uh, you can also draw straight in PowerPoint and Keynote, but I wouldn't recommend. But I think for note-taking, uh, notability is good. And you also have specific mind mapping software, which I have not taken into because I'm talking about drawing here. Uh, but if you want to use 
mind mapping. There are a lot of mind mapping software. So one of the things I like about digital drawing is this. You can see here freehand, uh, but most good drawing tools, they allow you to, uh, uh, they predict your stroke and they beautify your lines. You can see here uh, freehand compared to predictive strokes. So that's one good thing about drawing uh, digital is that they can make your lines nicer. I mean, if you want to, perfect, if you don't want to perfect them, it's okay. If you want to make a good circle, you want to have a good square, you, it's very easy when you do drawing with drawing tools, usually the good drawings like Procreate and so on. Secondly is coloring, right? I'm, I'm not a big fan of coloring, but if you want to color content, you can see in, in digital tools, you can just dump the colors in, <laughs> instead of color. So if, you, if you're rushing for time, uh, coloring is, is, very, uh, is very fast with digi digital tools uh, if you want to do coloring. Uh, and the third one is layers. Uh, sometimes when you draw, you only have one layer, but when you uh, do digital, uh, you can allow you, I'm showing you artwork now, not mind mapping, but it allows you, sometimes you want to resize the different items. You, you create different layers and then you resize the items and move them and so on. So these are the beautiful things about uh, digital drawing. But as I said, I always prefer low tech when you want, when you ideation, but when you want to create something uh, final output, especially if you want to do for PowerPoint, if you cannot do it nicely uh, with the pen and paper, uh, digital tool is, is, is actually good. Okay, so I'm just going to recap now. Uh, this is very important. Huh? Remember this. We always compare. Uh, we can't run away. But for you to be good at anything, I always tell the students, especially the students and learners, is that sometimes people are better than you in something. Some people, sometimes they're fast learners, you're slow learners. But if you really enjoy something and you really want to do it, don't always compare because that might stop you from doing it. Focus on your own progress. And sometimes uh, I've, I've learned this so many times that slow learners, uh, they will pick up if they keep on going, they might pick up and even overtake fast learners if they keep on trying. So just focus on your progress and in terms of illustration day. If you don't think you're good at illustration, just focus on your progress and, and you will find a way. Uh, inshallah, you'll find a way. Uh, and then we I'm not going to go through this, but this is the, the visual note, the first one. And then layout. When you want to visualize something, try to capture the keywords first before you even visualizing because that's the things you want to visualize or the key formulas or terminology and so on. And then you think about layout. Uh, if you have a header, header, and then you connect this, uh, no, sorry, keywords, and then visuals and connectors, okay? And finally, uh, ha have you seen this? I'm going to put this in your link. Yeah? Uh, if you want to practice drawing in a, in a fun way, Google has something called Google Draw, uh, Quick Draw. Uh, I put the link here. You can use it to practice your drawing, quick drawing items. So you can just play this game. They'll ask you to draw, I think, 10 items or five items. Uh, I think it's five, yeah. And they give you 20 seconds. You only have 20 seconds to draw what they ask you to draw. And they use artificial intelligence to guess what you have drawn. And then just to practice your drawing skills. Okay. And then we sh uh, I already shared that. And if you want to contact me, it's there. Uh, and it's been a very intensive session in the last 15 minutes. But I wanted to share with you today because we can do the Q&A. But I hope uh, at the end of this workshop that uh, uh, you've got a clearer picture on the importance of visualization and that if you don't think you can do it, you can do it and it can help you to, to, to visualize your ideas, whether using pencil paper, marker pens or digital tools. And I wish you could have more of the activities, but uh, we can, uh, that's something that uh, you can do on your own. But I think the very most important, don't give up. Uh, if you want to, I think it's so important for teachers to to also be able to develop their own visuals. I know we have all these Google image search on, but sometimes it's good to develop your own images. And also it's very good for problem solving and so on. So again, I want to thank the uh, the, the host and I'm going to stop the sharing now uh, and then we can open up to, to what do you call it? To, Q and A. To Q and A, yes. Thank you so much, Anjit Zaid. Thank you so much for the very informative session. <laughs> right. And very, I always like uh, Anjit Zaid's uh, visuals because it's very personalized and yet uh, it's very translatable, translatable to other people. So other people can understand it very, very well. Thank you so much, Anjit Zaid, for sharing the uh, experiences and also the tools and uh, applications that the teachers can easily apply, right? Also, Anjit Zaid, uh, can you share again the quick draw link for teachers just now and um, not be able to capture? Okay. So, 
Uh, Maybe you can put that. into the Zoom chat. Uh, oh, I'm teachers. sending a direct link. Sorry. It, it, uh, no wonder. It, what happened was uh, I'm only sending to one person. It was not everyone. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. That lucky person. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> see you. See you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, this is the link for the quick draw. So I will, later on, I'll compile for teachers in the yeah. Telegram as well. It's been around for a few years. That one is fun because you, you, they ask you to draw something and they use artificial to guess what you've drawn. So you can practice and see what other people are drawn. Uh, it's very, very powerful too. Yeah. Yes, yes. So we are taking I questions triangle, right now for Anzit Zahid. Or squiggle, or swan, or duck. I see teapot. Okay, who's, who's so, playing there? Yes, uh, they just feel free to put in your uh, question directly in the Zoom chat. Uh, uh, directly in the Zoom chat is, is fine. Uh, for those who are watching YouTube, for those who are watching YouTube, you can use the pin message, which is the Padlet link to share the questions with Anzit Zahid. Right. So very quickly, uh, I'll bring out the questions for Ajit Zaid for the uh, Padlet one first. Right. Let me share. Uh, at the same time, I can share with teachers how do we actually put in the questions. Right. So this is the Padlet one that we have so far. And you can actually add the questions here just by clicking the add button and then type, your, type any questions that you have and then publish. That is uh, the question. So okay. let me bring out the question so far. Um, hi, kalau untuk mathematic formula, macam mana nak visual? So how do we actually visualize mathematical formula? Is there any like thoughts on that? Okay. Uh, to be honest, uh, f- formulas, uh, I'm not so sure. But as I said, when it comes to mathematics, the, whatever has been visualized has already been visualized, especially for basis. So a good start, if you want to find, is to look for experts in the area. And, and actually, you can just Google the formula that you have, and you can just go to image search, and you Google the formula, and you put visual there or illustration. And, and it, you'll be surprised. You might find uh, people already out there that have already visualized that formula that you want to visualize. And, and this, is, this is what I will do, actually. I will look at what people have done it before, uh, doing image search. And then what I'll do is, if I think it's not suitable for Malaysian students or the images or not, I will customize my own visualization of uh, whatever has been visualized. So that's a good starting point. So, so, so that's a, instead of saying how you formulate, it, it's, it's to look what other people have done before. And if nobody has done it, then it's, it's a great opportunity for you to create some visual on that aspect. But I'd be surprised most formulas out there has been visualized if it, has, uh, if it can easily be visualized. So look for All it out right. there. For, yeah. But I, I think sometimes you need to customize for your local audience. Sometimes the visuals are not like it might be alcohol. Or, you know, sometimes the cartoon go drinking beer <laughs> or got religious. You know? So you have, to, that's why I say, if you can illustrate, you can customize your illustrations to suit your audience. That is suitable because sometimes visuals can have cultural implications. So that, I think that's very important. That's why I, I say it's very important for teachers to learn the basics of, of drawing. Uh, okay. All right. Which okay. One? The so, questions are so, starting to coming in, but ah, uh, just like a quick one, right? If let's say uh, is uh e equal to m c square, how do you like customize for your audience? How do you like uh, a quick one? How do you like actually visualize this e equal to m c square? <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, uh, you have those terminologies, right? Yes. Okay. Give me the terminologies. For example, uh, force m f o r c. Okay. So you force. visualize force. Mm. Okay. Then you visualize energy, right? You visualize, you yes. find a visual that is very sticky for that. So then those visuals connect. Of course, the visuals won't formulate, but those visuals will make you n- never forget the, the formula. So each word, that's a keywords. Break down to the keywords and then you visualize the keywords. Yes. Um, so like okay. it's designed just now, uh, you mentioned also it's about connecting different, different ideas together. Yeah. Uh, that's how you visualize uh, different, different yeah, uh, connect- concepts so, together. But of course, the, here, when you said MC square, it's just to remember the, the, the formula. Now, how to use the formula, that's a different uh, concept. But to remember the formula, you take the keywords, as I said, you look at them and say, how can I make this keyword sticky? You know, uh, like energy. How can I visualize the word energy? How can I visualize the word force? And then you find something that visualizes that word force that's strong. So that's why it's always better to create your own imagery because if I use force, I use Star Wars or Luke Skywalker on the force, it might sticky for me but maybe not sticky for you because you don't know Luke Skywalker so so but you have to find those keywords and then visualize in your own ways now if as somebody said if I'm not good at drawing you can always visualize in your mind you know so that's the so if you cannot draw Luke Skywalker you can always visualize Luke Skywalker in your mind so you can still visualize but what I'm emphasizing is when you can visualize externally as a teacher it's easy for you to 
to help your students, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, show what the visual you're trying to represent. Because sometimes you cannot explain your visuals that well, but if you can just quick illustrate, it becomes more powerful. Uh, as far okay. As I, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zaid. So we'll yeah. take the next question. Uh, this yeah. teacher over here is uh, exp expressing uh, appreciation to Zaid. Thank you for sharing and giving me lots of ideas. <laughs> May I know how you handle students who are creative but don't want to get involved in class activity? Oh, she has a student, or he or she has a student that uh, who can draw and paint but never do any class activity. Oh, this is about classroom management, I guess. Okay, I, I, I think there's there are 100 plus teachers here. I don't know if there's still 100 plus now, but can can answer that question much better than me. How to, because <laughs> I usually, to be honest, my most of my career, I work with students, but I most work with teachers. My job was to engage teachers to be active in, in the workshops. <laughs> but so normally but I, teachers are very good students. Uh. Teachers yeah, are very engaged yes, with your yes, sessions. <laughs> but but I, it's interesting. Many student, teachers are not that good at participating. You know, they, they, they are very good listening. But when you ask them to participate, they might be, uh, be scared, scared to show what they have. But I said, my strategy, I've learned some of the best uh, when I was in, uh, like Professor Bajun, you know, I think the key thing with creative students, if you ask me, I mean, very creative, they want to, they want to, you, you need to engage them directly. Uh, I, I give an example, like when I used to, uh, some people say, oh, this, this student doesn't talk at all in class. But a lot of times the teachers, they give up on the student or they don't talk to him. But you go up to the student and you engage him directly. You know, that's what I would do. Uh, any students that are quiet or making noise, it's, it's even worse if they're making noise because then I will actually engage them and say, what do you think? Uh, what do you think? So you, you, you have to maybe focus a bit more on them until they connect with you and then they become part of the... Uh, uh, so I would engage them as much as possible, whether they're quiet or noisy. Either way, I will find ways to engage them. That's my strategy. I always proactively go after them in a nice way. I won't uh, insult them, but I'll just engage them, you know. Uh, if they're yeah. talking, all oh, this interest. So focus on engaging them to get them in. Once they got in, then you don't need to spend so much time on them. That, that's what I would recommend. Now. Definitely, uh, definitely. On top of that, I think uh, teachers can also use uh, the way of interest stimulation. Actually stimulate this student's interest. What they like, what do you yeah. think, yes. then connect with them better. Yeah. Yeah. So, th so this yes. is uh, this is the thing uh, in, in terms of uh, creativity, visualization, is often we, like in, in art class, we might ask them, draw a flower, right? <laughs> Uh, but how many uh, students like to draw flowers? You know, so instead of saying draw a flower, first, as you said, find out what mm -hmm. they like. Okay, you yes. like cars? Okay, let's focus on cars. You want to learn how to draw, illustrate? Start with cars. But that, that's you already, you enjoy that. So that's something that will motivate you to do. So that's right. Yeah, you focus, you find the interest of the, what the student wants. And then, but the only problem is sometimes we have a subject that might not sound so interesting, right? Like, <laughs> uh, chemistry or physics. So you have to find something within physics and connect it. So say if they like cars, how can we connect the physics with the, the Ferrari? You know? Yes. So, maybe, uh, so then you get that connection. Then, ah, now I like this. Oh, for it's example, awesome. they like Iron Man. How do actually if Iron Man fly that high? Uh, what's <laughs> exactly. the physics behind? You ask the, you so ask they will the, like, love this topic a lot. Yeah. So, so it's just, as you say, find the interest and connect it to what they're learning. Association. Associate with what they're learning. And then you got the buy-in. Once you got the buy-in, oh, this is oh, this is relevant. I need to learn this. This is very good. Iron Man, how does he fly up? What keeps? <laughs> how does the engine? Yeah, true. So yeah, so it's so important because that creates that motivation. And the thing is, yes. when when students are interested, the whole brain is activated, and most of the brain is just activated, it's just energized. And when they're not interested, the the brain is switched off. And this is one of the I I I really I don't teach much anymore because I'm just doing my artwork now. But I I really admire teachers that can uh, switch on a switched off brain. <laughs> or, mm -hmm. or switched on somewhere else on their phone or something. It's, it's very powerful. As I'm sure a lot of these teachers in this group here are doing it and they should, everyone should get a clap for being able to do that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, okay, we have one question, uh, one sharing from teacher. He said, she said that I found that uh, students can perform better when they actually sketch out the problem or sketch out the questions and less stress. Especially hot question. I'm not sure what the hot question is. Teacher can higher, clarify. Higher, higher order thinking skills. Ah, hot, right. So, yeah. so teachers can can actually share a, a case study that students perform better when they sketch out the problem, so they understand better. So this yeah. is a very good example. But uh, teachers also ask, uh, like, what is the difference between drawing and sketching in your opinion? Okay. Um, I I I wouldn't say there. It's like to me, drawing is an umbrella term. Sketching is one aspect of drawing. 
you know mm-hmm. painting i mean I, uh, yeah it's artwork so uh, sketching is I, the idea of sketching is, scri- is I, i would use the word scribbling is easy and this sketching is usually like uh, architects but i think for us it's scribbling you know i like the word scribbling you just you're not wasting your time you, you're using the the drawing or the scribbling just to visualize your idea but you're not i don't need to create a perfect stick figure i just want to create a stick figure thinking then i want to create a house then i want to get a sun and how are they all connected so i don't have to spend so much time on the beautifying it it's just about to to visualize my idea my thought and that's what i like this idea sometimes it's good to have a timer so you say okay i have this idea i'm going to create 10 ideas of this i spend only 30 seconds per sketch that allows you to focus on just scribbling something okay then you because one of the key things we must teach students is is that great ideas don't usually come straight away they need to go through mm-hmm. many iterations and and one way to do that is to scribble many times one idea You know, okay. Uh, uh, like, say, say, I want to draw a new car. Instead of drawing a beautiful car straight away, I scribble one car and say, "No, I wanted to have four wheels." I scribble another one. Oh, maybe three wheels. Maybe five wheels. So I just scribble, scribble ten, fifteen times until my my idea is kind of, I'm happy with my idea. Then I start drawing it like nicely, or painting it, or animating it, or so on. So that's why I'm saying low tech, and it's very important first to to crystallize your idea to a certain state that's ready to be using more complex tool, which time consuming because doing beautiful visual is time consuming but scribbling is not i mean just rambling up and this you don't have the thing with scribbling is you don't have to show it to you no one it's just for you if you want to show it to someone it's okay but so you don't need to worry oh if somebody sees my scribbling this know how bad i'm enjoying you know no it's only for you that can that's only for you but the scribbling will allow you to be, create a better idea you know yes i think uh, from this is i answer it actually tie back to another question It's um and uh, do you think visualizing is time consuming as opposed to writing and repeating to remember? From this question, right? I remember there is one. Uh, there are a few students of mine. Uh, when I run uh, a few programs, uh, about creative learning, about memorizing things, they actually say, "Teacher, we we don't actually draw. We just repeat and repeat and repeat and then memorize it." Yeah. yeah. How how do you counter them? Uh, how do you like counter this uh, concept? Is that they like to repeat things? To okay. remember instead of drawing. Okay. Now the thing is, whether you draw or write, you should repeat. There's something called spaced repetition. I'm sure you know. So mm. for, to remember in long, because if you say I, I repeat, uh, say I, I repeat car, 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 car. I say it seven times in a row. It's not as effective if I say car now in 30 minutes, in one hour, in 24 hours, and two days. So when in terms of repetition, it's good to have spaced repetition. Which means you repeat the same thing over a period of time. It can be over a five-week period. You have uh, certain. There's not to be structure, but you repeat it a few times over different times. So it makes the memory strong. But at the same time, when you visualize uh, the memory, it becomes even stronger if it's a visual. So that's why I say try to visualize, like you said, MC square, right? So mm-hmm. if, if you want to remember the word force, if you can link it up with a very powerful visual, that word force will stick with you maybe for ten years, five years. But if it's just the word. It might stick with you for one week, two weeks, three weeks. Uh, now the thing is, is it time consuming? Visualization in the mind is not time consuming. Visualization on the paper is time consuming. But the idea with visualizing uh, uh, on the paper, it doesn't have to be a beautiful drawing. But this is very mm. important. Uh, your whole body is a learning organism. Okay, body movement involves learning. When you any part in the body you move activates some part of the brain. Uh, but one thing is very important. Remember, your as I mentioned, the thumb and the index finger is so connected to the brain. You can Google that later. Thumb index finger, what part of the brain is activated? So when you are uh, drawing it out, even rewriting, but if you're drawing out the visual, that energy that goes from your hand to your brain and then the, the imagination and thought, it really uh, activates the brain and creates those connections that might be very strong. So that's why I I believe it's good to visualize even with even with a pen, not just uh, mental imagery. Uh, and also, you improve your skill in in visualization that you can use when you become yes. a business leader, when you become an entrepreneur. Sometimes you you presented something, you pitch something, and the guy said, "I don't understand." You can just pick up a marker pen and just say, "Okay, this is what I wanted to say." I had to, I had to visualize in a different way because it didn't make sense in my slides. So if you have that skill, you got so many op- more opportunities. That's why I'm always telling students and teachers just learn the basics of of illustration. Then you can visualize your ideas, whether it's problem solving, pitching for ideas, and so on. Just that basic skill. It doesn't have to be nice. Just enough to connect with your audience and simplify something and create that aha moments. You know.
Yes, I think it's like highlighted a one very important thing because our students only focus on short-term memory or the yeah. short-term outcome. Oh, I repeat a few times with word, then I can remember maybe for one week. Yeah. Then the exam is next week. After that, I won't be able to recall it, right? If it's a useful knowledge. But if yeah. let's say they use visualizing, right? They, they re plus repeating a few times with space, like in I say, the forgetting curve uh, wouldn't be uh, yeah. that, that much of kick in. Right, then they can remember it for a long term. So that yeah. is how we actually like yeah. you know engage or encourage our students to use yeah. visualizing more. And, and that that I just want this is beyond school. This is one of the things I found, mm. uh, which is which is uh, we, we cannot do anything. This education to me, uh, if you ask me, uh, there are some. Uh, this is uh, in 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 although it's a religious school in in Hadram, I mean, What they do is, when you have learned something, you're supposed to know it. So in other words. Mm -hmm. The test doesn't come tomorrow. It can come anytime because you're supposed to know it. Now, the thing is what, what's happening now in education system is uh, we feel we don't know. We don't. We know it for the exam, but you ask us two weeks later, many don't don't remember anymore. So, <laughs> so I mean, from a logical point of view, what what is really, I mean, you, you're, you're developing discipline, you're developing a lot of things and structure, organization, hard work. So that's good. But at the end of the day, uh, what you can't remember for at least a period of time, it's it's not very useful. So, so this is one of the challenge education that we want to, uh, whatever we learn, at least the, the important stuff sticks with us and we can use it. You know, this is, is, is the knowledge, the skills, the attitudes and so on. This is very challenging. This part is very challenging. But of course we have yes. to have structured exams. But I think, I think it's very important to have exams, not exams, I like tests, a random test because yeah. you're supposed to know it. I mean, it's not, if, if you're like memorizing last second before the exam, <laughs> uh, you, do you really know it? <laughs> So yeah. yes, uh, I, I guess it's also tie back to um, the, the competition that we are about to um, give the students in this, in this, uh, in this uh, with the teachers over here. We actually share with the teachers, we have this competition called uh, Score A Olympic, which is a memorizing competition of green environmental topic, just like yeah. I just shared about sustainability. So we don't want our students, teachers, um, uh, would you agree with me? We don't want the students that after this competition, then they forget what to recycle, yeah. then they forget uh, to, 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 to uh, conserve the wildlife. We want them to remember forever and then take action, right? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. I think one thing is, is very important, uh, um, uh, uh, which unfortunately tests is a strong test. I might know the answer. I might understand, but I, the question that's triggered me to that particular answer didn't trigger that. So in other words, sometimes the students know the mm. right answer, but they don't answer in the exam because of nerves. Ah. And I think this is very important. And sometimes they know the answer, but they don't understand. Mm. So they get correct. So to me, the most important thing at first is to understand. Uh, you have to remember you can do both, but if you if you understand, even if you forget it when they ask you, but you know it, if you just trigger the question again. So you, don't, you don't notice some of my drawings, I would when I trigger the right question, the answer comes straight away. Right. Yes. So sometimes it's the formulation of the question. Sometimes they know the answer, but the, the way you formulate the question because you want to trick them, they couldn't answer. But sometimes the student answer, they don't understand, but they've memorized the answer, but they don't right. understand the answer. So I think it's very important. I mean, beyond the exam is the, do they understand what they're talking about? Do they understand the formula MC square? Not just to write it out, you know, but do you understand the application of it? I think in maths is straightforward because if they don't un understand, they won't get the results. But I think in a lot of other areas, it, it, they, they can write the right answer, but they don't understand. Uh, so, so I think it, by the oh, activity of visualizing, yeah. actually can show some understanding. Teachers can test them out. Oh, you draw it out. If they are able to draw it out, that shows some level of understanding. And also talking about it. Uh, when they talk mm, about it, yes. uh, and, and what is important is uh, they can talk out it with, a bit with their own words, not just a rep, because I can repeat a paragraph and I can memorize a paragraph, but mm. I can talk about it with formulating with my own words, even if it's a bit broken, because then that's when they show the understanding. Uh, and I think that's uh, it's very tough, but I think the because one of the biggest uh, issues when I've been in Malaysia, because I, I was I studied in Norway, but uh, when I saw every time I see these reports on student graduates, uh, the, one of the biggest issues to come out is they lack communication skills. I mean, that's mm. what they say. Right? But I think one of the reasons is uh, we need to uh, be much. It's not just school, especially university. Also, they always because we don't have time that they can communicate. But we must find ways for them to present their ideas more. 
so they become comfortable with communicating in their own words uh, and, and yes. emphasize that and not just they can rewrite exactly the same answer that we have given them. Uh, so this is this skill is so important. And, and I know the problem why they don't measure it is because it's so time consuming. It mm. is so time consuming, but we must find ways. I think that's where technology can help that we always ask the students to create videos on their ideas, you know, upload them. So they're always in the motion to, to present. So when it comes to the crunch, when they go for job interviews, when they start working, when they see the boss, they're very comfortable with communicating things that are a bit complex. Yes, I think it comes in a package. Like after that, after they visualize using like presentation, using keynotes, then they can create videos like what I say to present it out, to communicate it out their ideas. Right, yeah. that is very very important in our era right now for the students. So yeah. thank you so much, Zaid, for highlighting that uh, for teachers. I, I believe teachers have uh, you know some takeaways from this. We um, have uh, about eight more minutes to take some questions. So we have two more questions at the Padlet. So teachers, feel free to put in any more questions. Uh, we will uh, address you in this uh, seven more minutes. Right. So this teacher actually asked, "What do you think if teachers publish all the students' class work in the Facebook page?" Would it help students to develop interest in art or the other way? So actually, yeah. do you have like experience like this to encourage students to post somewhere like okay. the artwork? I think uh, the number one issue is if you post, uh, if teachers post students, I would, they have to ask students permission. Yes. Mm. I mean, because sometimes students don't want, they're shy or they might get teased. So if you want to publish student classwork, uh, you can ask students to publish, you can create a, a Facebook page or a group maybe a better type of group, uh, a closed group, just starting with the group and ask the students, part of the assignment is to, to post the, or part of the subject is to post the, the notes to share with other students in the class. Uh, yep, I think but, definitely that is one but, way to uh, uh, respect the students, connect yeah. with them in a better way. But I think this generation also, I mean, all generations are sensitive, but uh, it can, they can, it can backfire quite a lot because uh, social media can be very cruel, you know, <laughs> for some people. Uh, so we have to respect the, the students' uh, privacy on this aspect, but uh, in closed groups. But the easiest way to solve this problem is the teachers don't upload the work for the students. Students upload their own work. But then yes. they're, they're giving that initiative, not that you are taking their artwork and say, publish. Or if you're doing that, ask them, is it okay? If they say it's okay, then, then issues should be no issues. And also we need to teach students how to give uh, constructive feedback. Mm. I think a key thing like you learn is that when you want to say something about some other people's work, start with a positive, you know? And then maybe go on the critic. Don't say, or if you don't, if you only have to say something negative, maybe you shouldn't say it, you know. So start always with a positive, something positive about the person. Because the person has put in the effort. And then you can come up with say, or maybe you should have the visual should be more colorful or maybe more lines, you know. But always start with a positive because that creates that a good, a good initiative, a, initial uh, connection. I think that's very important. Instead of just saying, oh, this is useless, you know, <laughs> rubbish. It's so a very good positive uh, feedback loop. We close yeah. the loop so that they can actually improve. Uh, so I think that's something we, we t teachers and we should always teach the students when you want to to, to, to comment on people, because people have put a lot of effort, even if it's, when they're sharing something, they're putting something personal for them. So, mm. so they, you don't want to kill them, right? So you always start maybe something a bit positive. You, there's always something positive, no matter how bad. Appreciating their work. Yeah, 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 appreciate the Then, but you can always... Uh, give constructive feedback they might take it badly that that happens but at least you you highlighted the positive aspects of it first and then and that teaches you with a positive mindset so you always start with that positive mindset and then go into the critical uh, second phase okay right so thank you so much for the useful tips from Zaid. so i think last question from here is that is there any website or link where teachers can post their student artwork with students from other part of the world I think I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, to I'm, clarify I'm, what what do you mean by post their students artwork with students from other part of the world? No, I, I understand the question, but I I I I'm I'm not in that world yet. But I'm sure there's websites where people post other uh, there's there's what you call these groups or Facebook pages where people share their, their means artwork. to showcase right showcase yeah, students showcase, artwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm not sure any specific link. Uh, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, but I'm sure there is. But you have to search for it, I suppose. Go to Facebook or go to Instagram or, or whatever social media and, and look for them. Or maybe that particular website, I'm sure. But I'm not right. of any specific one. Yeah, but I think uh, teachers, uh, if let's say it's uh, it's the pure art 
pure art uh, kind of like artwork, not the uh, the other subject like pendidikan seni. I think one of the very very um, useful way to showcase or, 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 or interesting way to showcase is by participating in the Fab Castell Young Artist Award. I'm not sure whether you are whether you are aware of this. Uh, if let's say you need more information, you can always like uh, have a chat with me later. Right. Yeah, yeah. You have your you have this competition going on, right? Uh, yeah. The yes. Yeah. We actually have different competition going on. One is the art, uh, this uh, uh, drawing about the theme of uh, sustainability. How do they conserve wildlife and stuff? This is the drawing part. The other one is the uh, creative learning, which is uh, how do you use this kind of methods like visualizing, like mind mapping. How do they remember the facts of sustainability topics? Yep. Yeah, so these are the two types of uh, competition we have in the in in the coming months, right? So okay, so anything else that you guys wish to teachers, uh, fellow teachers want to ask Ansit Zaid? Uh, we have uh, three more minutes over here. We can always ask Ansit Zaid for some tips. So uh, all in all, uh, teachers are putting in comments in the Zoom chat saying uh, it's a very very good sharing. Thank you, thank you to Ansit Zaid. Very very good sharing. And yes, inspired me to be more creative in teaching. Yes, teacher Rini, very, very <laughs> awesome. This is the outcome that we want to actually achieve. So do bring in uh, this concept or this visualizing uh, methods in your classroom later on. Like explore, explore new methods. Like, like MG Zai is a perfect example. Uh, explore your own uh, figure, the sticks, stick figures, right? <laughs> yeah, you can always find your style. Wow, uh, Teacher Tan, uh, we love you. Wow, thanks. Oh, thank, uh, you, wow, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will. I love you very all too. Awesome. We're a very good group. I, the, the, the only, <laughs> what I like is we're still hundred plus. We started with a hundred plus, and we're still hundred plus. Which is, I, I'm not sure everybody's yes. here, but that's pretty good. Yeah, that means I've done something, something right, something right. <laughs> Definitely very right. Definitely like many things right. You know, in the in the illustration and the tips sharing with all the teachers because all yeah. educators over here, we always like you know we maybe have some blind spots. We need to uh, have some reminders or experiences from others to inspire. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's that's a very very good part. Mm -hmm. So teachers, uh, so in finally, in one or two words, in one or two words, maybe you can put in in the chat. What do you think about Anjit Zai's session today? What in one or two words? What do you think about Anjit Zai's session today? All right. So in one or two words, can describe to describe to Anjit Zai. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. Ah, okay, I can I can live with yes. that one. That's positive. Let's have some amazing, awesome. awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Out of the I box. Know. Wow. <laughs> Wow, wow and inspired, inspired. W O W. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So thank well, you very much. Thank you very much, and Zaid. And yes. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, welcome. You great, welcome. Yeah, you did a great. I mean, you did a great job. I mean, I was impressed. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't speak Bahasa Malaysia or or Chinese or. Uh, <laughs> no worries. Probably we can invite you uh, with uh, another session <laughs> uh, that we can use translating or uh, Bahasa Malaysia. You can always like use Bahasa Malaysia, right? No problem. No problem, teachers. So uh, if let's say there's uh, no more question, probably I will share the link of a feedback link for teachers to to fill in to fill uh, in. And then it's also act as an attendance form. So teachers, please fill in this attendance and feedback form uh, for today's session. Yeah, for today's session, I'll put in into the Telegram group as well. Right, I'll put it into the Telegram group as well. Yeah, right, the, only so, thing, yeah the only thing I'm, uh, we have actually, we had two more activities, drawing activities, but that's something that would have been fun for the Telegram was one is to draw your own stick figures in a scenario and uh, uh, those words, but that, that's something maybe next time or some other time. <laughs> Yes, yes, definitely. So uh, any uh, final words from, uh, final shout out from uh, Encik Zaid to our fellow teachers? Yeah, I, I just be, I mean, you're all great already. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, uh, how, what I shared today, can that help you in any way? If it can, I'm, I'm very happy. If it cannot, uh, then I'm still happy that I was allowed to share whatever I could. And thank you very much for inviting me. And inshallah, you have all the success in the world in what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sensei, for the uh, very, very encouraging God bless. Uh, yeah, God, bless God bless. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I think, uh, Sensei, maybe one final thing that we can do is just now the, the, the activity that you want to bring out, the, the one that they can illustrate the idea, the, a few boxes. Yeah, probably can put that in their Telegram group, then they can try it out. Oh, okay. I mean, I can share the slide, but that's it's not an instruction there. So let me just share. Let's just share that. The, that one is more of a. Yes. Uh, just, I find this, it. This is I I, I call it. Uh, let's go here. It's proto sketching an idea. Uh, so what I usually do is uh, I haven't written. I, I usually you can have a timer. So you said I don't have to use a timer. You don't have this. But the idea is that you spend thirty seconds or one minute on each box. You can draw out the boxes first, and then you draw your idea. Keep on iterating your idea, 
Uh, but it should be something small, not big. For example, say that you want to, you ask a, 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 a kid to draw a, 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 a car in a creative way, a new kind of car or a plane or a flower. You just draw the, the outline in many creative ways and you sketch it and you can draw maybe 10, 15 drawings in 30 minutes or 20 minutes. And then after that, then you, you have all these ideas. Then you start finalizing what you want to do more beautiful. You know, Awesome. The, uh, how, how about the other one, the, the one that with boxes and then they can illustrate um, different, different words, oh, visualize okay, okay, different, okay, okay, different okay, words. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I haven't brought in, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, there's a lot of, uh, let me just go through. there is a lot of. Uh, yes, uh, the one, yes, yeah, this one. Uh, this one yeah. I think this template, I think teachers can actually use it to try it yourself yes. first. Yeah, draw, what comes to your mind on these words? Okay. Just draw them out. Yeah, that's, this is very simple. It's just to get going, you know. Uh, then you do more. Com I think the key is when you want to do these drawing concepts, I just start with simple things first. Don't start with the complex stuff, but then you give up straight away. You say, oh, I can draw time. I can draw time. Because this is something you can go on the whiteboard when you want to engage the audience. You say, okay, instead of saying, uh, do you have an idea, students? You go to, to class and you, I mean, to the whiteboard, you start drawing a bulb and then maybe drawing a guy thinking, I say, okay, what is your idea today? So then that, that, that engagement connection brings the session a bit more live. That's the way of engaging. Instead of just saying, do you have any ideas, students? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it's also a very, very good method to remember some words as well. Yeah, for yeah. example, you are teaching English. For example, yeah. you, are, you are guiding your students to participate in the Olympic, uh, the school Olympic, remembering some environmental words. Yeah. Right, sustainability, for example, uh, they can visualize it using this yeah. method. So I think this is a very good template that uh, I think uh, teachers can try it out yourself and then you can create your own one and yeah. to, uh, to apply in the classroom. Right? I think uh, uh, for, for teaching purposes is the idea that you, you don't want to, you want to visualize quite quickly, say if, especially if you're doing it with students, if you're using mm. a whiteboard, you don't want to spend too much drawing it out because then you lose connection with the students. The idea is here to draw some, so if you draw an idea, you don't draw a beautiful bulb that takes you two minutes. You draw a bulb that takes you five seconds. You understand? Because so then you don't lose the time limit. Yeah. No, not five seconds, but you, 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 you always want, to, even when you're illustrating, you still want to connect with the students because some teachers, what they do is they're so good at illustrating, but it takes so long time. So students lose that connection. They start falling asleep in class, you know? Mm. So you have that engagement, on, off, on, off. That's, so that's very important when you visualize it. It's not just visualizing something nice, but you're connecting with the audience. So that's that's why when you want to visualize a concept, uh, especially if you're using it for teaching, is to draw simple lines and make it as simple as possible. But at the same time, it's nice, but it's, it's very simple. So it allows you to do it fast so you can always keep that connection, the conversation going on with the students instead of stopping yes. too long to illustrate, yeah. So I just I will recommend like putting a time limit, for example, one or two minutes, or just to illustrate this. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah, just scribble. Don't need to really draw out the beautiful drawing. Yeah. So this is what uh Jizai has been reiterating. So hopefully teachers uh, get this uh, idea. Thank you so much, Jizai, for the final tips of the final <laughs> two activities. And let's have this. Uh, we have uh, reached the end of the session. Let's have a very, very simple uh photo taking session to, you know. Celebrate this moment with Anjit Zaid along. Thank you so much, Anjit Zaid. And then we really, really appreciate it. So fellow teachers, fellow teachers, let's uh, switch on your video. Switch on your video and uh, we can have a very, very simple photo session before we uh, end this, today's, this Saturday's morning session. Right, okay. Uh, feel free to join in, teachers. Oh, some teachers actually at school on Saturday. Very good. Right. Yeah, probably because of the connectivity, they choose to be at school. Right. Okay. So teacher, feel free to open up, uh, switch on the video. And I would actually put the screenshot over here. Right. In three seconds, right. We can put like thumbs up. We can put like love, right. I uh, show, show your appreciation <laughs> to a <laughs> diet, right. Okay. One, two, and three. One more. Final one. One, two, and three. Yes, there you go. Thank you so much, teachers. And thank you so much, Ansid Zayed, for joining in today and sharing with us so many useful tips and activities and tools for teachers to applic uh, apply in their classroom. So thank you so much, Ansid Zayed. We will be uh, ending this session uh, very, very soon. And now final announcement, final announcement to teachers. We still have, we still have uh, such 
session next week, which is 13th of August, and we'll have another expert joining in. So don't miss this session at the same time, 9.30 to 11. So I want to ask teachers over here, who will be joining in next Saturday as well? Please type in yes, type in yes, just garner your, garner your uh, this spirit over here. Yeah, I will. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right. So we have uh, our next expert will be about sketch noting. Sketch noting. How do you actually, it's very, very tied back to actually Anjit Zaid's uh, session, but how do we actually translate the sketches to a structure notes, right? To a personalized note as well. So Miss Valeria Rodriguez from Miami, United States will be wow. sharing this session to you, to teachers. So don't miss out. Definitely don't miss out this session. 9.30 to 11, I will be sharing the schedule and also the topics in the Telegram group as well. So a lot of teachers say yes early. So we will see you guys. See you teachers in uh, next Saturday, 9.30. So once again, thank you so much, Anzit Zaid, and thank you so much, fellow teachers, for joining in. Today's session has uh, reached an end beautifully. And thank you so much for joining in. And today, uh, I'll be sharing with you a, a lot of uh, information in the Telegram as well. So stay tuned in the Telegram group, the expert sharing session, score A, Fabulous L. That is all. That is all. We will be uh, ending this session right now. So goodbye, teachers. Goodbye, Encik Zayed. And okay. take care. Take care. See you next Saturday. Goodbye, all. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Okay, take care, everyone. Assalamualaikum.